Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. And I'm Landon Oaks. Landon, we spoke in our last episode about uh, things that you saw at the Build Conference with Microsoft mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago. Let's see, we're, we're on June 3rd now, so I think that was back on the 12th of May, something like that. We talked about changes to Fabric and cool things that are happening there. Another big thrust of the conference this year was agents, mm-hmm. um, a- AI-driven agents. And, you know, agents have been around for a bit now. People have been talking about how great they are or are going to be. I've tested them, you know, in little use cases here and there over the last few months and haven't found any other than coding agents that have been very compelling, mm-hmm. just sort of general business use case agents seem not, have seemed not that inspiring so far. But it sounds like Microsoft unveiled some stuff that sounds like it's going to be pretty good. What did you see? <clears throat> yeah. So that was the theme of the entire conference, agents. Um, you know, every session you went into, they'd say, you're probably tired of hearing this, but agents and yeah. go on. So some of the, the cool kind of pieces were really these different levels of where you can build these agents, right? I'll, I'll focus more on kind of the business side. So there's just really quickly, so people know, there's this new concept called Azure AI Foundry. Um, it's really for nitty gritty coders, you know, um, web applications, custom apps, et cetera. On the business side, you have Copilot Studios and Microsoft Copilot. So they have a decent amount of out of the box agents, right? Which I wouldn't expect many people to get much much use out of unless they're, they're too general. Yeah, too general. You know, they're they're trying to make them so you install them and they work, but those things always they're have issues because be customized. Or, exactly, yeah. and so that's kind of where they introduce this Copilot Studio um, area. <clears throat> and what what you can do in there is you can build your own custom agents, right? So you it, it chooses the best model for you based on on what you want it to do. Okay, um, you can hook it up to all different kinds of different data sources. So. One of one of the things that you know they they showcased was they had it hooked up to a SharePoint site with a big thing of their standards on how they process bank loans and okay um, just you know, free text standards like it, it was like PDFs Word docs so they were pretty clean they okay. were they were very clean documents um, good documents yeah, uh, yeah. And so the what the agent was able to do then was really cool you know you could ask it questions it could even customer facing they could uh actually have it go and move funds between accounts etc oh wow that's yeah a little scary <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was another big topic was okay. how do you control these things right? yeah yeah um but one of the biggest things there is then the, the kind of key is you know this whole concept of junk in junk out yeah. right you can't point your agent at a giant list of these different resources with 30 different versions that I might have updated throughout the years, you as a human know, oh, I need to use this version. Your yeah. agent won't. Right. 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 Um, so you really need to have clean, clean resources for that yeah. thing to use, whether that be Word docs, PDFs, PowerPoints, et cetera. Or your data lake. Yeah. Or data lake. I mean, so you've got to have a really clean semantic model and good Good metadata about what's in there and so mm-hmm. on, what the tables mean, what the columns mean, what the what yeah. the relationships are, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the cleaner you can get everything you have, you know, even as a human, right? If I look at it, I should be able to know, oh, I know exactly what this is. And we know that's not always the case at oh, businesses because that takes time. It's hard to do. It does. So that's going to be critical, actually. The quality of data, we, we know this, but the quality of data has always been important for good BI and reporting and so mm-hmm. on. But as you're having autonomous agents go in, it has to be even tighter Yeah. because you're going to, going to potentially have them taking actions based on what they learn from your data. Uh, and so you've got to really make sure you've got good governance and good quality control and you know, good agreement on what things mean and so on. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, <clears throat> that's one way where they they featured purview a lot. Um, you know, not only for governance to make sure the AI is staying within some guardrails, right? Yeah. You can categorize your data and tell it don't touch anything that says sensitive right yes um but also if in analytics realm you can use purview to kind of give that layer of you know this is what this column means okay so that's where so they're using it for metadata Mm -hmm. as well as access control yeah exactly interesting what was the coolest agent you saw 
Oof, that is a good question. Um, oof. Okay, so one of, one of the ones that, that I thought was particularly interesting because it's one that's being used. So Microsoft actually showed two of their agents that they, they, they used use internally. internally. Okay. Yeah. Um, the one that, that I latched onto the most and I remember the most is uh, it was a IT agent, right? So IT it, help desk type <clears throat> thing? Yeah, like a help desk okay. agent, right? Um, and so it kind of enabled self-service for some of these users uh, that, you know, you don't have to go open a ticket with IT, wait maybe a day, a week, two weeks. And so it did simpler things like, you know, if you get onboarded and you're not added to this big team where uh, Microsoft employees will exchange messages, you can just ask it. It'll add you, right? Okay. So it was only able to do things that Microsoft said it was said, allowed to yes, do. Yeah. yeah. Our, all of our employees can do this, right? Yeah. But it's easy like when you onboard somebody you forget those things oh yeah so quickly yeah we just had uh, this week we're onboarding somebody and uh our it guy is out this week on vacation <laughs> i found myself doing permissions and stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot <laughs> yeah yeah there is okay so that's pretty cool i mean i've used agents with companies that are pretty good you know you go into a chat and it's clear you're talking to an ai agent but they can look up an order check the status get you a tracking number you know that that type of thing mm -hmm. um i i'm sure I, these things are coming on strong they're going to become more and more useful i'm excited to see that uh, uh, you know as i said at the beginning i haven't really seen great use cases so far i mean there's nice little demos you can do to show how they work, but not really taking a chunk of work. It sounds like that's coming mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, yeah it is. It, it's, you know, it's coming. And the biggest thing is that they're like, none of these are just going to work for you out of the box. What they're really focusing on doing is giving you the tools to be able to make it your own and yeah. make it work, test it. You know, um, you can even tune your models now and it's fairly simple to do. Can a business person do it or do you need to be technical? You need to be a little bit of more of a technical business person, right? Like I would think of somebody who's like an Excel guru, probably, yeah. Okay, you know? so you're not writing a bunch of code. No, it's it's very low drop. or no code, right? Okay. But you do need to know like um, how to write a good prompt to give it that first foundation, How what information to point it to, how to set that up. But it's very much, you know, drag and drop, click connect into your credentials, yeah. right? So this is going to become a whole job category, I bet. Yeah, yeah, and that that's kind of one of the things they they had. I actually have a shirt, right, and it has developer crossed out. It has coder crossed out, <laughs> and one more, and then a, and then a big thing, and it just says builder, right. And so yeah. that's kind of what they're thinking. Was that a Microsoft shirt? Yeah, Microsoft shirt. That was what I got at yeah. the conference. Yeah, it's so interesting watching these build conferences over the last three years, where it just became all AI. It was all data oh, for a while and BI, and all AI. Um, now you got agents and now data's wrapped in there tightly. It's all sort of coming together in an interesting way. Yeah. Yeah. They are pushing, pushing these hard. So I, I would expect to see some cool things. Um, and it's not just Microsoft too, you know, yeah, I know. Google, Amazon, all the big players are yeah. really driving down this path. Yeah. So we'll see some really cool stuff. I'm this sure. This next year will be interesting to watch yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else you want to add before we sign off? I don't think so, no. All right. Well, I, I appreciate the peek into that, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it more in the future. All right, yeah. Thank All right, you. Talk to you later. All right, we'll see you.